It's the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. Tonight, the masked magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to making an armored bomb squad vehicle disappear and surviving walking through the razor sharp blades of an industrial turbo fan. Plus, the truth behind trading places with a cunning assistant. Plunging a rose through a woman's heart and slicing her in two. And much more, right now on Magic's Biggest Secrets, finally revealed. To begin, the masked magician will attempt an illusion with this very official and very imposing armored bomb squad vehicle. Borrowed, of course, from the city's finest. To prove that it's real, he walks around the truck. careful to point out the emergency barricades that have been set up behind it. No one dare approach this from the rear, lest they be crossing an official police line. His assistants enter, carrying two more regulation barriers for the front and back of the vehicle. He doesn't want this truck going anywhere. Or does he? While the assistants flank the corners of the truck, the magician calls for a large curtain to be lowered in front of the entire scene. There are the wheels of the truck and the legs. The girls are still there. Let's check the alignment on the front end. Yep, the wheels are still there and look carefully for the legs. What would the masked man do without his assistance? Keep your eye on the wheels of the truck. Remember, this is one continuous shot. No camera tricks are involved. The curtain lowers to completely cover the vehicle, and the magician summons for it to rise. It's gone! So where did the three-ton vehicle go? He steps into the place where it was once parked to prove it's vanished into thin, slightly smoky air. The masked magician has done the impossible yet again. But this is one crime scene that bears investigation. How did the masked magician make a three-ton bomb squad vehicle disappear without a trace? Here are the secrets. The armored bomb squad vehicle is a genuine truck, but I can assure you there is no armor plating. When we open the door, you can see that its interior has been stripped clean. Everything is gone including the polyester carpet and rubber mats. Even the engine has been removed in order to make the vehicle as light as possible. We'll show you why in a minute. The magician never bothers to show us the inside of the car. The flashing police lights on top and the phony emblem on the side are all it takes to make it look like the real thing. The police barricades add the final touch of authenticity. The girls add another level of distraction. With the barricades in place, it looks like the car can't drive away even if it could, but it won't need to. Hanging directly above are four heavy-duty steel aircraft cables. When the magician motions for the curtain to be lowered, 
the cables are simultaneously lowered behind it. The curtain stops just above the wheels. This allows the magician a chance to distract the audience from what is really going on behind the curtain. Here's the view you don't see. The cables connect to four points that have been securely welded to the vehicle. Two in front, and two more in the rear. These hooks have been painstakingly positioned for proper balance. Once the curtain is lowered, the four beautiful assistants grab the cables and attach them to the secret hooks. They do this as quickly as possible so that from the front, the audience doesn't know anything devious is going on above those lovely legs. These super strong cables are attached to a powerful winch, which is hidden high in the rafters. The curtain lowers, and here's another secret. Hidden in the wings is a stagehand who operates the winch. He flips a switch, and the vehicle begins to rise. Even with the guts removed, this baby still weighs more than a ton, so you can bet that winch has been selected for double capacity. The truck rises just a foot or two above the bottom of the curtain, and the rest of the lifting is simultaneous. The vehicle is suspended just behind the curtain, so the audience assumes it has vanished. Without the curtain in place, you can see that it's merely being lifted into the air by the four steel cables. The girls surround the magician, and the audience has been fooled again. What a life. The magician will now attempt to impress a young lady with his supernatural powers. First, he's got to find the perfect accomplice. Looks like he sees what he needs, a dead fly. He scrapes the fly into his palm and holds it in his outstretched hand. It's dead as a doornail. He flips it back and forth between his palms and offers it to the girl. Brave soul. She doesn't even flinch. He waves his hands over the fly to infuse it with his magic spell. And how about this? The spell, or the young lady, has put some life in his fly. Talk about a girl who could raise the dead. The fly's moving around, but can he still do what flies do best? Yep, there he goes. Off to ruin another picnic. And that's how to defy the laws of life and death and bring a fly back to life by magic. So how does the magician take a dead fly and bring it back to life? The secret is simple, scientific, and safe. It wouldn't even harm a fly. First of all, the fly isn't really dead. It just appears that way. In fact, it's just chilling. During cold months, flies hibernate, making them look more dead than alive. Before the illusion began, the magician put a few flies on ice in this chest to trick them into a hibernating state. His assistant places one of the chilled out flies on the windowsill so the magician can pretend he found it there by chance. This is where he does some acting. Hey, look, a dead fly, just what I always wanted but there is a secret to how he can make the frozen fly defrost so quickly. Before the trick began, the magician and his assistant warmed up their hands in preparation for the fly. The warm hands helped speed up the time it takes for the fly to thaw. A few seconds of contact with their body heat and the fly awakens from his frozen slumber. The hot television lights are a big help too, but soon he's ready to fly off to a better climate. And that's how the magician plays Dr. Frankenstein, giving life back to the dead. But we know his secret. Coming up, the secrets street magicians don't want you to know. Find out how they pull a car registration straight through a windshield without breaking the glass. Bite a quarter in half. 
and communicate with spirits using only a piece of chalk. Plus, the magician exposes one of magic's oldest and baffling escapes. Then, find out how to impale a girl with a rose and slice her in half with a medieval torture device. And it's one of the most dangerous illusions ever. See how the magician walks through a spinning industrial fan and lives to show you how it's done. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. For his next illusion, the masked magician is a trick that street magicians have used to fool their unsuspecting victims. While cruising a parking lot, he happens upon a random car with the registration displayed inside the windshield. He makes sure we can see that the registration is definitely underneath the glass. But you know, he's up to something. Walking alone in a deserted parking lot? Let's watch. He covers the registration with his hand, rubs the glass, and now look at this. He's reached through the glass and is pulling the registration slip out. This has got to be illegal. So much for expensive car alarms. The owner of this vehicle is in for quite a shock. No chips, brakes, or cracks. It's safety glass after all. And the magician has registered another hit. I bet he can even open the door lock without a wire hanger. I think it's safe to say that the magician doesn't really reach through the glass of a random car and pull out the registration. But how does he do it? The first secret is the car isn't random at all. This one has a beautiful assistant hiding in the trunk. Looks like a late model. We see the magician cover the registration with his hand, but what we don't see is that inside the car is a piece of fishing line taped to the back of the slip and running through the car into the trunk. When the hidden assistant gives this line a tug, the registration pulls away from the inside of the window and drops out of view. Here's an angle you don't see. She tugs and the slip flies. The magician secretly hid a duplicate registration in his hand before the trick began. With his hand against the glass, we never see it. Until, of course, he goes through the magical motions of pulling it through the glass. Actually, he's just pulling it out of his hand. From this view inside the car, you can see just how he does it. And that's how he breaks the law without breaking the glass. This classic illusion is called the assistant's revenge. You'll find out why in a minute. The magician begins by showing off his latest restraining device. This one resembles an upright wooden rack. It's got a stock for the neck and heavy leather straps with chrome buckles to confine its victim. But the magician's not going to restrain himself, not when he's got pretty girls around. He calls in one of his lovely assistants and charms her into obediently stepping into place. Looks like she's done this kind of thing before. With her hands up against the stocks, the magician begins to secure her to the rack with the leather straps. She's not struggling, so he must be doing something right. He certainly has a way with leather. Now for the waist. He cinches this strap tight. Two more to go. Next, he heads below the belt. Ouch, this one is even tighter than her skirt. 
Still, she doesn't seem to mind. One last strap to go to secure her legs, though she doesn't look like the runaway bride type. He checks the straps one more time, then goes for the headstock. This updated version of the medieval restraining device will prevent her neck and hands from any sudden movements. Just to be sure, the magician padlocks this front stock into place. And you thought your boss was tough. When the magician's assistants say they are all tied up at work, they mean it. But this is the glamour of showbiz. Once he's satisfied his assistant's not able to escape, he pulls a curtain that's designed to encircle the entire contraption. But what's this? The curtain's still moving, only the girl is pulling it, and the magician is now locked inside the device. Good for her. Now you know why this illusion is called the assistant's revenge. Bye-bye, mass man. Let's see you get out of this one. So how did our mass magician trade places with his bound and beautiful assistant? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician secures his assistant to the rack with the straps. I can assure you that the straps are real. So are the headstock and the padlocks. That's because they never really have to open. So how did the assistant make her quick escape? The frame of the rack is actually made of two separate halves. From the back, you can see that hinges along one side allow the rear of the frame to swing open, while Velcro strips along the other side hold it closed. Even though the assistant is really strapped in from the front, she can easily swing open the back and step out anytime she likes. Here you can see her using her fingers to release the Velcro catch and make her escape out of the back. The magician pulls the curtain to block our view of the assistant. As soon as she is hidden, she slips out of the frame and continues pulling the curtain from the other side. Meanwhile, the magician takes her position. As the audience sees that the assistant has switched places with the magician, he is still slipping in to take her place. Here's a secret view of the switch. The assistant pulls open the curtain just as the magician snaps the frame closed and the illusion is complete. Revenge is sweet, especially when you know the secret. Next, the startling secrets behind sawing through a woman in an iron cage. Conjuring spirits from beyond the grave. And walking through an industrial turbo fan without being ripped to shreds. When magic's biggest secrets finally reveal return. a medieval torture device. The magician is quite proud of this antique apparatus, and why wouldn't he be? It's an egg-shaped cage made of forged bands of iron. It's empty now, but knowing the magician, this cage won't be empty for long. He calls in two of his assistants who come bearing a small rack. They lift the cage from its heavy-duty mount. 
and place it down on the rack. Here they can remove the hardened steel pins that secure the two halves of the cage. With the front half of the cage removed, we can see how something or someone can be placed inside. Here's someone now, and she's something. The girl assumes the position inside the back half of the cage, and it looks like there is barely enough room for her to make the tight squeeze. Now two male assistants enter. As she steadies herself, they replace the front of the cage, trapping her inside. I'm getting uneasy just looking at the situation. The steel pins are replaced, and she struggles to find a comfortable arrangement. There isn't one. The male assistants lift the cage and place it into the heavy mount, along with its beautiful cargo. What happens next is anyone's guess. The magician removes the steel pins again and opens the clasps. The two halves separate, but the girl inside isn't going anywhere. His other assistants now cover the sections of the cage with heavy pieces of black canvas. They're careful to stretch the fabric tightly around the cage. Inside, you can bet that the cage is cramped and dark, and no place for a lovely lady to spend an evening alone. The magician motions for another assistant. This one comes bearing a razor-sharp cross-cut saw, just when you thought this device couldn't get any more torturous. The magician steps behind the cage, and you got it. He begins to saw between the two halves, and presumably, the girl. This just isn't her day. It seems like he's having a hard time of it. She looked like a tough cookie. Remember, she's strapped inside with nowhere to go. He's made it all the way through and removes the saw. The assistants regroup. One takes the saw as the others remove the canvas. And there's the beautiful girl in the iron cage. Uncomfortable, but unharmed. So how did the magician make it look like the girl in the cage was sliced in two? Here are the secrets. The cage is, in fact, as sturdy as it appears. It's got to be in order to safely hold the girl inside. When she kneels down to climb in, she arches her back to fill the cage and make it look even harder than it is. As the halves are secured, she keeps her back arched, and the cage looks almost too small to contain her. But when she bends down, we can see that this is only an illusion. She has more room than we imagine. Once the cage is in its mount, the girl has plenty of room to roll over onto her back. In this position, She's able to slide some of the metal straps away, allowing her to drop down out of the bottom. As he saws, the magician uses his skills as a mime to make it look like he's struggling to cut through flesh and bone. In reality, 
the girl has rotated onto her back, slipped out of the secret metal bands, and lowered herself safely below the path of the saw. Who says show business isn't glamorous? Here's a look at her movements without the canvas. See, there are two sections that have been rigged to secretly slide away and give her enough room to slip down. In this provocative position, she's in no danger of being touched by the saw blade as it appears to cut through the gap in the cage. Good thing, because this is a real saw and it does cut close. However, the teeth have been filed down to nothing with a power grinder, just to be on the safe side. By the time the assistants remove the fabric, the girl inside has replaced the sliding metal bands, flipped back onto her knees, and waits to once again fill the cage with her loveliness. And those are the secrets. Next, the magician shows you how he can summon spirits from another world to leave their mark and plunge a rose through a girl without leaving his. Plus, find out the secret to how street magicians bite a quarter in half. And then, the magician walks through the spinning blades of a giant industrial turbo fan. We'll expose how he does it. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. The magician will now attempt to solve a mathematical problem with a little help from the spirit world. He begins by showing us two old-fashioned slates. Kids used to write on these in school. The original laptops. He takes one of the blank slates and uses a piece of chalk to write some numbers. Seven. Five. And a plus sign. Not exactly high finance, but it is a kid's chalkboard. Maybe he wants to go easy on the spirits. He leaves the solution blank, then places the two slates face to face. And just so that the spirits will have something to write with, he tosses in a piece of chalk. I think magical spirits would have magical chalk, but this is his trick, not mine. He gives the slates a couple of shakes, and presto, there's the solution. Seven plus five equals 12. Adding was never so spooky. How does the magician solve this magical math problem and get the spirits to give him the answer? The secret here lies within the two identical slates. First of all, they're not identical. One of the slates has been cleverly rigged with a secret panel that fits within the frame. This thin piece of slate already has the solution written on it. The magician writes the mathematical problem and solution on the back of this panel, then loads it into the frame so we can't see the numbers. When he puts the two slates together, this secret panel flips down into the other slate, revealing the solution. Without showing us the writing on the panel, he drops in the chalk just for theatrical effect. When he thinks we're convinced the spirits are done, he separates the slates, revealing his pre-written solution. The illusion is complete, and he never even summoned one spirit. The magician has a trick that is perfect for a first date, Valentine's Day, or any time you want to say I love you with flowers. All he needs are a beautiful girl in extremely tight pants, and of course, a rose. She just happens to have one on that old-fashioned cigarette tray. Gotta love a girl who doesn't smoke and brings her own flower. In Hollywood, she's a total catch. Well, the magician has the flower and the girl. Now, what does he have in mind? From the look on her face, you can tell that she hopes his intentions are honorable. But she knows the masked man all too well. She's a brave girl to let him approach from behind. Maybe his magical trances really work. What's this? He's plunged the rose straight through her back and out through her stomach. 
That's one way to touch a girl's heart. Though for this much grief, she'd probably prefer jewelry. Now that his hand is out, she appears to be quite relieved and stunning as ever. But we're not letting him get away before he reveals the secrets. So how did the magician impale the girl with the rose, then remove the flower without incident? You've been looking at the secret all along. When the assistant enters, we notice that she's carrying an old-fashioned tray used by cigarette girls in nightclubs and Vegas casinos. Whenever assistants carry an unusual object or wear an outlandish costume, you can bet that it has something to do with the secret. When the girl strips off her jacket and elaborate blouse, you can see that her outfit was covering this fake arm. It's held in place by this shoulder harness. The fake arm disguises the fact that her real arm is tucked under her blouse and across her stomach. For the trick, she wears a black glove just like the magician. You'll notice that the ruffles on the blouse conceal the fact that her hand is hiding underneath. The front of the blouse is left open, which makes it easy for her to slip her hand from between the ruffles. The fake hand is attached to the side of the tray away from the audience, so they assume both of her hands are holding the tray as she enters. The magician approaches the girl from behind and pretends to plunge the flower through the girl. He's careful to keep his hand directly behind the girl's back. At the same time, the girl pushes her gloved hand through her blouse. But how does the flower get from behind her back to inside her shirt? Before the trick began, a duplicate flower was concealed inside. This is the flower that the magician takes after she drops it on the tray. The original flower has been gimmicked with clear plastic tape, so it easily attaches to the back of the girl's leather jacket. When she pushes the duplicate from her blouse, it appears that the original flower has passed right through her body. A little dramatic acting creates the illusion of agony. And that's how the magician appears to tickle a girl's fancy with a magical rose. Next, the magician exposes the amazing secret to biting a quarter in half. You won't believe how he does it. And then, he walks through the deadly sharp blades of a giant turbo fan and survives to show you how it's done. When magic's biggest secrets finally reveal returns. Next, the magician will attempt a little close-up magic using an ordinary quarter. In case you're wondering, this authentic quarter is legal tender for all debts, public and private. The magician places the quarter into his mouth and appears to be taking a bite out of it. Take a closer look. Those are genuine teeth marks. That's one way to get your minerals and your money's worth at the same time. Now watch. He spits, he scores. The quarter is back in one piece. A neat trick for less than a buck. So how does the magician bite a chunk out of the quarter, especially when we can't even see his teeth? And does he really spit the missing piece back out, restoring the quarter in front of our eyes? I wouldn't bet on it, not even 25 cents. Here's the secret. The real quarter has been rigged to bend, then spring back into place. When the top is folded back, it appears as though it has been bitten off. Here we see that when it looks like he's taking a bite, he's merely using his mouth to fold the coin, hiding the top part behind the bottom section. See, there's the folded piece. When he appears to spit the missing chunk and restore the quarter, he's simply releasing his thumb and allowing the top half to spring back into place. Ka-ching! No one suspects the rigged coin is simply unfolding before their eyes. And that's why he makes the big bucks. The magician will attempt to cheat death one more time as he takes on the spinning blades of this giant turbo fan. The fan is positioned in a framework 
and behind a protective canvas shield that will prevent others from harm and to save us from a gruesome sight should anything go wrong. You're looking at an actual turbofan that is capable of slicing a human to pieces in a matter of seconds. The assistants enter to give the magician the help and encouragement he needs to perform this dangerous trick. On his command, they open the protective shield to reveal the razor-sharp blades. Remember, this is a professionally trained, world-class magician. Do not attempt this or any other illusions at home. You can see that there is room in the framework behind the fan. Keep your eyes on the magician. He steps up into the frame, so he's standing directly behind the spinning blades. Not the safest place to be, but the object is for the magician to defy a horrifying death. The assistants close the shield and bolt it into place, carefully sealing the canvas. He's ready. There go the lights, and there he is, still standing behind the deadly blades. But what's this? He seems to be pushing his hand through the spinning blades and out of the canvas shield. Yet the turbo fan is still spinning. pulls his hand back through. I must be seeing things because that is impossible. The lights go out again and the girls enter. They unbolt the front of the frame and open the shield. And there is the masked man standing behind the rotating blade still in one piece. There's no way for him to have passed his arm through the canvas without being sliced to pieces. It must be an illusion. The frame is bolted shut one more time, and the canvas shield is sealed. Let's see what happens. The girls back away to a safe distance as the magician gets ready. There go the lights. They're back on in an instant. Maybe the turbo fan is causing a power shortage. No matter. We can clearly see the shadow of the magician on the shield. But that's not a shadow. That's really his hand. And now his foot. That's no illusion. He should be shredded by now, yet he continues to pass through that fan as if it weren't even there. He's out, and the fan keeps spinning away. The magician has challenged death yet again and won. Good job, masked man. I'm truly your biggest fan. Up next, the incredible secret behind walking through an industrial turbo fan. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. We just saw the masked magician walk through the spinning blades of an industrial turbofan and survive. So how does the magician pass through the razor-sharp blades of the fan without being sliced and diced like a mountain of coleslaw or a mound of julienne fries? The secret is a matter of mechanics and split-second timing. First of all, the blades of the fan are real, and they are very sharp. But you know by now that when a magician prevents you from seeing something, that something is the secret. But he's not making the magic happen. This guy is. From this angle, we can see that the frame around the fan is built to allow the fan to slide back and forth. When the stagehand pulls on the cables, a concealed pulley system moves the fan closer to or further from the canvas. The next secret is in the lighting. 
Two different spotlights are cleverly focused so that the shadow of the fan is exactly the same size whether it's closer to the canvas shield or farther away. Here the fan is positioned close to the canvas. When the spotlight goes out, the fan is moved back and the next spotlight comes on, but the shadow looks precisely the same. From the front, you can see the shadow appears to be the same size. The magician waits for the light to go out, steps to the side of the frame as the fan moves back, and then steps in front of it before the next light comes on. Now that he is in front of the fan, he can safely pass his hand through the center seam without harm. The shadow makes it look like his arm is crossing the dangerous blades. From this angle, you can see that he's merely standing in front of the rotating fan. See? No danger at all, as long as he doesn't lean back. But how did he get back behind the revolving blades by the time the frame was opened? Simple. When the light goes out, he just steps to the side and reverses the process when the fan slides forward. The lights come back on, and he looks like he's standing exactly where he started. Then it all happens again one more time. The lights go out, the magician sneaks around the fan, and when the lights come back on, he splits the seam and steps through. The audience thinks he's magically walking through the twirling fan. And there you have enough secrets to make your head spin. Next time, the masked magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets.